So let me start over here. And over here. All right. Got somebody's attention. This is God saying, wake up. It's our time to wake up. It's almost like when we've been asleep all night. It's sometimes when we get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I don't want to get up yet. I want to lay in bed and sleep a little bit longer. And so we stay asleep. And sometimes that happens in our own life. We go asleep. We fall asleep to the things that are around us. And we need to be waking up. And that's why there are things that happen to us at times in our, in our lives. Some of the stuff that's going on in the world right now, when we talked about nature and all of its stuff the last couple of weeks and how that affects us and our oneness with it. So there's sometimes things happen to us that look like we're getting hit with a two by four, right? Or something happens in our life that's a little bit painful, but it's all an opportunity to wake up. And what are we waking up to? The higher truth of love, which is the only thing that matters. So here I talk about often the love of others that we need to have for other people and the love of God that we need to have for God. But we can't do those two until we totally love ourselves first, which is what this talk is about. It's entitled, My Love is Self-Love. So it's really difficult sometimes to love ourselves totally because our mind has judgments about, oh, I didn't do this right or this is happening or oh, if it wasn't for those people out there in our family or if it wasn't for the government or any of this other stuff, maybe I could love myself more. But we got to get to that point, beloveds, where we're really loving ourselves unconditionally as God loves us. So I want to give you a reminder of what I shared a few weeks ago. Mother Teresa said, there is more hunger for love and appreciation in this world today than for bread. That's true. We all have this deep yearning inside for the love that we know, that our soul felt being one with God before we came into physical form. And to deal with the love that we have here, which is a human love in this three-dimensional physical body, which is different from what the soul is that it connects to and the oneness with God. So, as I started this year out, it says, what's the theme says? Anybody remember? Where I am, thou art. Where thou art, I am. So stand up. Where I am, thou art. Where thou art, I am. That means God is right here. In her, in me, there's no separation between us. There's no God there, and then there's this blank space all of a sudden, and then God's here. Not only that, but her soul is one with mine, because we're all here together. Her personality is one with me, because we're not separate from another. And sometimes that's difficult to understand. Where I am, thou art. Where thou art, I am. So here's the love that we could have for ourselves and for one another. Do you feel it? Okay. Your turn. Where thou art, I am. Where I am, thou art. There is no separation between you and me. And I love myself and I love you. And I love God in you, and I love God in me. That's the way we want to go. I can't come to you and say that if I'm not loving myself. I can say the words, I love you, but there's a disconnect if it's not there in front of me, inside of me, first of all. So, I'm not through yet. So, her soul is in this physical body. It chose to came here to experience all that she's experiencing in her life. And to get to the point of self-love. So that she can then connect to her soul and know what that is about. Because the soul is just about love and our oneness with God. So the more you love yourself, dear one, the more you can love me and other people and God. So where thou art, God, right here. Where thou art, I am. Where I am, thou art. There is no disconnect. Can you feel that? Okay. Can the rest of you feel it? It's a very important statement, and sometimes we forget about this. And so, when I work with clients a lot, and I tell them that mostly we as humans do not love ourselves totally. And some of them say to me, well, that's not true. I love myself. You all would probably say that, right? 
But that love is based upon how our life has been. We establish a certain life thing in our life, how it vibrates, how it moves, what's going on in our life, our relationships, our jobs, etc. And so we think because our life is going along this way, I'm here alive, I love myself. But the truth is we don't. Not the 100% totally unconditionally way that God loves us. We still are carrying around times that we have judgments and separation. So when people tell me, oh, I love myself, and I go, okay, I want you to look at your financial situation. How is that? How is your health going? There's so many different aspects of self-love, and I want to go through them. Number one, and think about them for yourselves. Health. Where are you at with your health? Anything less than perfect health is not loving yourself because you're allowing something in your body. You're allowing a different emotion and thought than what God says. You're perfectly healthy. How about your self-esteem? How does that connect to you in your life? How do you feel about your esteem and your presence? Your self-worth. Any of you feeling not worthy at times? We do that. That's a lack. That's a disconnect, okay? How about self-confidence? Do you always feel self-confidence or no? We go, well, no, but that's okay. There's sometimes I doubt myself, but it's okay. Is it really? No. We want to be beings that are feeling the self-worth of God within us, to feel the self-worth of ourselves, who we are. The totality, we chose to come down in these physical bodies. We chose to have the lives that we're having and the experiences that we're having. And it needs to come from self-love. That's what God wants from us. How about your loving relationships? How is that going? Good paying job or career. Do you love yourself with that? Or do you have issues going on? People you don't like at work, something that's getting in the way. How about time to enjoy life? Do you have that? That's part of enjoying yourself. If you're these people that are totally workaholics and doing things all the time and not taking time to just stop and smell the roses, as they say, to connect to yourself and feel yourself and be one with yourself. How about financial independence? Boy, that's a huge strong word, probably as a little button thing that goes financial independence. Oh, I get along okay. Money comes in from my job, etc. But financial independence, meaning what? That I have enough money to provide for myself and do what I want to do in my life and be who I want to be. God doesn't say you can only have so much. You should only be on Social Security or on this or that and then limited income. No, there's an abundance of income. Everything that God has for us is out there waiting for us to claim it. That's what this whole thing is about. How about being spiritually attuned? How connected are you to that? Even though you come here to fellowship, is there times when you go home and you disconnect and you forget about being spiritually attuned and one with God and yourself? So where on a scale, beloveds, do you fit with all of these? Look at that for yourself. Because I asked my clients that, and, we, and I did this in a workshop or a class I had called Practicing the Presence. And we went over that about how... And remember, our mind thinks this way, logically. Oh, if zero is here and ten's here, five is in the middle, and there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, somewhere, so let's say I'm an eight. No, this stuff works exponentially, which means it multiplies itself. So if I'm standing at a one and I go, well, I'm at a two, which multiplies, but three multiplies, it's out here further, four's further. Think about where eight and nine is at. And if you say you're still at seven, there's still a long ways to get connected to self-love. Now, there may be some of you guys thinking, well, that's impossible to reach. Total, unconditional self-love. Is it? That's a thought. Do we want to hold on to that thought? Or do we want to change it and say, I am here to have total connection to all of those aspects. That's what God wants for me. And because when we connect to them, beloveds, it helps us open up to the God's kingdom within us and outside of us and all around us because we are entitled by the mere fact that we were created out of God's mind, 
with all the aspects of God within us, we are entitled to everything that we desire. Take that in. We are entitled to everything that we desire and that we deserve to have. All of the aspects of love of our lives are meant to be completed in love and joy. And if we're not experiencing that, if we're struggling, whose fault is that? Not that it's a fault, but it's just that we're feeling less than. Any of that stuff doesn't come from God. And there's some people that look at that and go, well, why did this happen? Why did the floods happen? Why did this happen in my life? They took my child away. This happened. Why did it happen? God, please, why did you let this happen? And God's going, it was all your choice. I gave you free will to create your lives the way you want to create them. You have my kingdom, all of what you want to have in your lives. Why are you not choosing that? It's a good question. Every heart responds to the warmth of love. Just think about that word, the warmth of love. To feel warmth of love, of self-love for yourself. Every mind yearns for its embrace and no life is complete without love. So we're looking at our heart that wants the warmth of love and our mind that wants to embrace it and connect to it. Love is really the fulfillment of the law of good. And the law of good is the law of God. The law of good says, God is my good, my good is my God, it's all there for me. My good is waiting there. All I have to do is ask and receive and be in gratitude because it's there all the time. Well, it doesn't look that way to me. I've been wanting this for years and it still hasn't come. Or I've been praying for my partner to wake up and be better for me. And no, all the, I want more money. No, we got to stop all that stuff. Let's just sit here for a moment and go, if I am not receiving all that God's kingdom to me, then where am I blocking myself? Where am I not feeling self-love so that I can bring it in? Because that's what love is about. Love is the fulfillment of the law of good. The more love I have, the more good I receive. Love alone can heal the world and cause people to live together in unity and peace. And we keep asking for peace, don't we? But we look for it out there. At Christmas time, all I want is peace in the world not knowing it starts here within ourselves. And so this just said, love can heal the world. So if I love myself totally unconditionally, I am adding to healing of the world. I don't have to look at people in situations and go, why don't they change? Why don't they do what I want them to do? Why isn't this happening? No, just let me love myself totally unconditionally. Let me be with me and feel the energy going out into the world. And I am just by being that one person doing that, can cause people to live together in unity and peace. Wow, that's a huge thing, isn't it? We have the power to do that. Mark mentioned last Sunday about how we need to love our neighbors. And he gave examples about that. And I would want to add to that statement that we cannot love our neighbors until we love those people inside of us. So what does that mean? If we want to love a gay person, we need to love the gay person inside of us. If we want to love somebody in Korea, we need to love that Korean person that's inside of us. If we want to love a southern racist flag waver that we have judgments about, and that's why I put it that way, until we love that person in us, because there is no separation. We think it is. Oh, I'm not gay. Well, you don't know that. You could be, but it's not, doesn't matter. I just said, where I am, thou art. So God is in me. God is in everybody throughout the world. God is in all the people in Korea that we want to find fault with, or in Afghanistan, or my neighbor down the road, or whoever it is. We have to be able to love that person and go, I have that tendency in me because we are all one. There is no separation. And the more that I love myself, and let's say I love that possible gay part of myself, 
then I can love that person because I have a feeling of it. I have a connection to it. And it comes from loving myself, really loving myself and accepting those beliefs, those feelings, those ideas inside of myself. If I want to get out and wave a flag and say, take the statue down or whatever's going on in there. If I feel that inside, I need to love that. I can't judge it in me. And if I don't judge it in me, then why would I judge it in somebody else? I know it's difficult maybe to understand sometimes, but it's really the step that we need to take. Because whatever judgments that we have of another person are really our own judgments. They start from us. And they get projected out. So as an example, I remember back in 1991, I think it was, when I was in this program that really helped me change my life and got in touch with a lot of what I talk about. I went to see the movie Silence of the Lambs. Anybody watch that movie? Yeah. It's, uh, it's really a scary movie. <laughs> And I left that movie driving around because I could feel all this stuff going on. And I kept asking, what am I feeling? What was it about with this movie? And I finally realized I could easily be that person that killed somebody and skinned them if I didn't have enough emotional control around me. It just came about if I hated myself and didn't love myself at all, I could easily hurt somebody else because I'm not loving them either. Right? Does that make sense? So I could easily identify, boy, that person, instead of judging this person and saying how icky and ugly and whatever, I had to get to the point of going, I could be that. I could feel it inside. So I better love myself, not judge that part of myself, because then that's judgment. I had to love myself that that part's there. But thank God I'm in a place where I'm learning how to express my emotions and get my anger out, which was a lot of what I was doing at the time. Does that make sense? So we have that within us. We need to really connect to our self-love. So, Mark, would you stand up? Come here, please. What is it in you that's stopping you from loving yourself totally? What's one thing? Oh, you don't have to think about it. I don't know. You don't know? Don't but know. you know there's stuff that stops you from loving yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this moment, since God is here in me and you, I acknowledge that you are total wealth, health, and love. And whatever ideas or beliefs that you have inside of yourself that stop you from loving yourself, let's just release it right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. It's just an illusion. So I want you to re release it from your body so you can get into feeling love for yourself in all the cells of your body. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. You are love and you are God and you are the love in between us. So it is. So it is. <laughs> Did that feel good? Annie? What's one thing that's stopping you from loving yourself totally? I like me pretty well. I know, but there's things that you don't, because you, you still question stuff outside of you. I have a neighbor. Uh, it knows because I've complained. She's, yeah, I'd like to share this. She's done a couple numbers on me, one of which about a year ago I feed the hummingbirds right outside my morning perch, but the bees came. And she turned me in to take down. She said she was allergic. This was on a Saturday. And the landlady took it down. The next morning I woke up and my hummers came and there was no. I was so full of rage and vengeance, something I am not. So I came to church, to prayer circle, and asked for forgiveness for how I felt. And apparently you guys really worked hard. <laughs> the next morning, when I came home from lunch, she was on her porch, and I was free. And I waved and said good morning. And on the rail of my porch, I don't know how many will pick up on this, 
right under where the feeder was, was a hawk. Mm -hmm. And there's a message there. Mm -hmm. But I've been freed ever since. In fact, I had one this morning. I'm sitting here thinking, do I love her? That's pushing it, George. <laughs> uh, she's moving next week. So, all right, now listen. Yes. Do you all hear what she just said a little bit ago? What's stopping her from loving herself? This other woman. If this other woman wasn't there doing things, I could love myself. And you came and you got some help and it changed it. But then you're still looking, can I love her? No. Why? Because Almost. I'm not loving myself totally. You can't love somebody else or you can only love them to the degree that you love yourself. So you need to work on loving her. yourself. Yeah, I know. I don't need to know her. Everybody in this church could probably say, I know what you're talking about. I had somebody in my life that did the same thing. So what? She got me three times. Huh? We all have a neighbor, what? That we want to move. Yeah. She got my car taken away from me. She told Pam. Okay. She started a rumor I had a thing going with a maintenance guy. It's the age of my kids. Okay. Let me tell you this. Now you're bragging. Maybe I'm stretching it. So, Annie, what I would say to you is I don't care. You know what I care about? You. Loving yourself totally. That means no judgments of anybody else. She is who she is. But whatever you see in her is part in you. And that's what I want you to get back to. Yes. I just told you. I saw this movie. I could be like the person that killed. You got well, judgments inside like of you. You got anger inside. Yes, you could. Because she's in your life. Yeah. Okay? Everything around us is our lessons. We have people, all relationship is about learning. How can we learn about ourselves if we don't have somebody in front of us that's going, oh my God, I can't stand you. And we start learning about our own judgments inside. So stand up a minute. So in this moment, Annie, I pray and I claim for you that you release this woman from your judgments. That you release anybody outside of yourself from your judgments of you. And that in this moment, you feel the total unconditional of God's love in your heart and your body because that's all that matters. Total love for yourself right now in the cells of your body and let everything else go. Can you claim that? Almost. Mm, okay. Total. Then I want you to work on it. I that will. That nothing else stops you from loving yourself except you so that you can change that. Okay? I've been gracious of time to work. Well, good. Be And then watch it, what happens if somebody else moves in and has the same thing. <laughs> okay, let's go on. So outside of the answers that you gave me, or that you all may feel in yourself that stops you from self-love, I want you to ask that question. What stops me from loving myself totally? Somebody else out there? My job? Whatever it is. But the deeper truth is that we are all run by our unconscious thoughts, our ego. Things that we took on, and there's four points to it. Five, most beliefs were formed in our early childhood by being absorbed from our parents and our culture. We learned things. We modeled our parents. We learned from them how to relate to one another, how to relate to the world and work, etc. We learned things from our church as, we, as early child. We learned things from our government all the time. And so we take those in. So as a result, number two, there is a tendency of the mind to draw on evidence to prove how right it is. Annie has a judgment about this woman, and she could easily do something, and her mind goes, see, I knew it. I was right. Because it draws in evidence to prove how right we are. Number three, what attracts our attention is familiar. We can't attract anything less than what matches our vibrational energy, can we? Because it doesn't match. If we're vibrating at this level, we can't attract somebody in total love. We can only attract somebody vibrating at that. And then we go, oh my God, you are bad. You're not good enough or whatever. And we judge that when it's ourselves. 
Number four, our adult life is often about validating and reinforcing the negative beliefs that we formed in childhood. All those judgments that we have. Our adult life is about that. We're still carrying around our mother and our father inside of us or our old church or our government or whatever it was that we learned. We're carrying it around inside. And so as a result, we are attracted to what allows us to be right. We want to be right and you get to be wrong. Isn't that the way it works? If you don't agree with me, how much of that do we have going on in our country right now? If you don't agree with me, if you don't do it the right way, the way I think, you're wrong. Something's bad. Change your behavior so I feel better. Well, wait a minute. No. I have nothing to do with out there. I just need to change me. My behavior inside of me. My lack of self-love. So those are five important points to understand how our mind works. And when they're happening, when those things are happening, then we're in judgment. We're in separation. We're certainly not... Stand up, please, again. <laughs> We certainly can't be in this place of I, where thou art, I am, and where thou, I am, thou art. If I'm sitting here going, oh, Margaret, I don't like the kind of sweater you wear. It doesn't fit, you know, it doesn't fit you right or something. In that moment, am I one with God? No. There's separation that occurred. So if I'm going to stay here connected to where thou art, I have to love this woman just exactly for who she is. Because I have to love myself exactly for who I am. Does that make sense? And that happens all the time. It happens so quickly. Somebody can do something and all of a sudden that judgment will come up with it. We may not even know we had it. I remember back when I didn't consider myself a racist person at all. I had some black friends in college at my hometown I played basketball with. My mother, on the other hand, was somebody, one day I got home and she said, I don't want to make any racist comment, but should you be playing with those black guys? I'm like, what? <laughs> And, and I had to look at myself and go, God, do I feel that way? And then I joined the Navy and I go to the Philippines and I started finding myself I had judgments about the Filipinos. I didn't even know who they were. But they're too small. They're, they're, you know, they hold hands with each other, which I, when I really got past my judgments, it felt like a good thing. Boys would walk hand in hand with boys, girls with girls. There was no sexual energy, just the way they were. But I was judging Filipino people and I had to really start looking and going, God, this doesn't feel right. I need to let it go. So, we have to work on our self-love because we desire, we deserve it. And I'm here to help you. And as pointed out, there are sometimes I get into lack of self-love, but I have the tools to really move myself out of it. I've worked on it, so I'm here to help all of you. Take advantage of it. So, I want to go from self-love which is where it starts, to the love of God, which is second, and then we'll go to the love of people. To make that move, I want to end with this truth. And I'll start with the first one in the beginning. The first one goes, where I am, thou art, where thou art, I am. There is no separation. There's only the oneness. So to move into more connection with God, I want to share this. The one mind is God flowing from itself through itself, to itself, by means of you and me. Wow. Did you get that? The one mind. Now, we talk about how there's only one mind. We are part of the one mind. Is God. It flows. God flows from itself, through itself, to itself, through means of you and me. When we get together, there is God flowing through us, is what it means. So, that means, Annie, God is flowing through you and this neighbor. Once you wake up to and accept her for who she is, quit judging her, quit judging yourself, and feel the oneness of God. I have to some extent. Okay, keep it up. And that's for all of us. That's where we need to be. Letting God flow through us to itself as itself by means of you and me. Namaste. Okay, any comments?